like one of the highest death leaders uh, for mid laners in Europe. So the fact that that's going to be taken off the board means that he's going to be forced to play something else that perhaps can be punished. But Schalke, they're going to prioritize that Silas. No real surprise, it's been heavily, heavily picked here in Europe. I'm surprised this left often open so yeah. often, considering its record, even though uh, it's already received another loss today. I still feel like as a champion, he's very strong. He can be flexed all over the shop. Speaking of flex pick, Spice immediately going to answer with a flex of their own. Yeah, Jarvan just seems to be must pick first rotation either side at the moment. So flexible, you can take him to jungle. Have seen him in the top lane and not probably in the mid, but support is a very, very rare possibility that has happened over in Korea. Alongside that, the Galio. A very strong support pick these days. So I already really like what Splice is doing because the Galio can be flexed both mid and bot. Um, but what we're potentially seeing is Jarvan in the hands of Zerse, Galio in the hands of Norskaren. Really strong playmakers, not only in terms of the early game, but really strong team fighters as well. And the thing about Splice is while their mid game is very questionable, they make a lot of mistakes, they get caught out a lot. If they just guarantee these already strong team fighters, it means that they have that late game insurance, which to be fair, they've proven multiple times that they still have good enough players that they can win out on these late game fights. They definitely have. Kobe, so consistent for Splice across the course of his career with the team. Uh, it's been with the team ever since it got into the LEC as well. Ezreal picked up here for Upset. That's one of his signature champions. Played it seven times already this split. Alongside that, you take the Tarm Kench for a bit of safety. Ignar not going to be on a playmaker today. So Schalke going back more towards their one through one style that they played a lot at the beginning of the split, usually leaving Odo Omni on an island. He would typically just kind of win or go even in lane. If you discount yesterday, uh, he's had a pretty solid performance in the one versus one. Um, and he right now could be looking at grabbing that Silas for himself. But I'm really liking this splice draft, if I'm being honest. I feel like that it plays very much towards how they have won in the past. The, the analyst desk talked a lot about going back to their identity and kind of talking about how this team can find wins. And you're now seeing Rise being picked into the Silas. That can be picked both top and mid. Spoke to Amazing. He says it's a really good matchup. You can really, you scale well in a side. Because of the prison, you can kind of lock him down. And who cares if he steals your Rise ultimate? What's he going to do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think so far, Splice have a very solid draft to answer a lot of what Schalke's doing. Uh, going to see some AD carry bands coming out here from Schalke as well. Sivir taken away. Uh, I'd like to see them... I'm trying to think what Kobe is been really strong on this split. He's played a, a, basically a mix of everything. The Jinx yeah, is something... a really deep pool. Jinx is something I, I just I mean, always Kaiser, associate with him. Kai's is the, the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, just because I think it's a really good pick into the Ezreal. You could go for a Draven, but I think it's really hard to snowball. It looks like Schalke have the same read that I do. Uh, Vayne is the other one. If you really want to go like late game, strong duelist, good answer into something like an Ezreal, Vayne, yeah. really good pick. Uh, and it is something that Kobe has played in the past. I don't know if he's played much this split, though. Hasn't played it yet, the split, but we have, as you say, seen it from him in the past. I think we saw it in playoffs in summer, if I recall correctly. Rexai was the ban. Tristana, though, still on the card. A very strong AD carry on the current patch, and that will be locked in for Kobe, leaving a probable top lane counter pick left for Splice. Um, yes, looks like it. Because again, they can flex pretty much everything. Uh, you know that the Galio is going to go into the support position at this point, um, which doesn't really come as much of a surprise. Um, ooh. So I'm not a massive fan of the cannon pick here, just because now this to me, if I'm Splice, I would lock in the uh, Java for top. I would run him airy, and we saw when Wonder played into the cannon match, it actually does really, really well. Uh, it's really difficult for the cannon to have any kind of kill pressure, and you can just farm pretty safely in the laning phase. Um, it does kind of fit into the one through one style. What they want now is just a bit of engage somewhere, because they, they're kind of lacking that initiation tool, so the Sejuani fits that role comfortably. I think for Splice, if it goes the way that what I'm expecting, then I think they can just go for a jungle pick here. Um, with Nocturne being banned, something like an Olaf perhaps wouldn't be optimal. Maybe they just pick a safe top laner and... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you go top, you're kinda you take limited the Jarvan in jungle into jungle, pool. you take someone safe that can scale up. Ooh. Cho'Gath is going to be wow. the pick for Chachi in that top lane. This is like a... 
It's an old school threat. Yeah, back. old school comp for sure. Like a lot of area of effect, a lot of crowd control, a lot of reliance on the Tristan to be the primary damage dealer in these team fights. But you have a lot of wombo combo potential for Splice. Um, and they can kind of match, they can very much set up the one for this. It's funny because to me, this feels very much like what I was hearing from Amazing earlier in the day. He wasn't on the uh, analyst desk, but his opinion was very strongly around if you're going to play one through a one four, then just stick to it. Uh, if you're try don't try and draft a one through one if you can't execute upon it properly. Just commit to the one four, and which is what they've done, and they still have strong late game team fighting as well. So I, I want to expound a little bit more upon that. Like, how does a 1-4 really differ in terms of team style and team play style than from a 1-3-1? Because to me, it just seems like where well, you just put one of the people that's in the 4 into a different lane. So uh, <laughs> we can probably talk a little bit more about it in game, yeah. but it's a pretty large concept. Okay, well, <laughs> I will make sure to come uh, back to it in game. For all you and say, just believe me. I know, I say, 100% yeah. I believe you, Benny. 100% <laughs> I believe you. I just think it's good to discuss these sorts of things. We'll talk but about it a little bit more in game. Speaking of 1-4s and 1-3-1s, one Schalke have drafted 1-3-1. One one. This basically means they will send a Kennen and the Silas off onto two separate side lanes later on to the game. They do have strong scaling, and it's going to be difficult for Splice to handle them, um, but Ryze should be able to hold his own against the Silas, but again, if both the Cannon and the Silas get ahead, Cho'Gath is really going to struggle to deal with that Cannon off on a side lane later on. But in any case, win conditions seem pretty clear to me. Splice want to fight, Schalke want to split up the map. Can Schalke get their solo laners ahead in the early game? Can Splice successfully stall and not fall too far behind and maybe even shut down some of these split pushes? Well, that is what we are keep our eyes on. A massive game for both these two teams. Schalke up against Splice, but sitting at 7-6 and six in our standings. And I always... When you get to this portion of the split, you know, we've only got five games left for all of these teams. You have to start looking at who teams are playing up against later, who teams have already played up against, how many of those easy games you've gone past, how many teams you have still ahead of you that you have to play. And I think when you look at that, for Schalke, it actually looks like it's a relatively easy road for them. They've got XL left, they've got Rogue left, two guaranteed, in inverted commas, wins. They don't have to play G2. They've got Misfits who aren't on the best run of form. They've got Origin who've looked a little bit shaky as well. For sure. Um, Schalke still have a very solid strength of scale duel. Uh, and I think that if they get a win over Splice, it kind of... Uh, it separates them from the pack that's very cl uh, quickly closing in around them. But you kind of uh, compare that to Splice's strength of schedule, and you can see that their path is a little bit tougher. They have to go up against all of the teams that are kind of on the rise and pretty much all around them as well. And G2, they're going to be going up against next week, who are obviously going to be very annoyed after this week. And we've seen what happens to G2 yeah. when they come back after a deficit. They look very, very scary. They still have to get through Schalke today. And even though Schalke have struggled, they're still considered a strong team. And there's the Fnatic game that they're going to have to play, which is a very, very difficult. And especially SK as well, getting a big win today. Like Splice definitely have a tough road ahead of them. So if they can grab this win today, it means that there's more room for errors yeah. later on. And it, it gives a little bit more opportunity if you do happen to drop a game against one of the stronger teams. Especially since they lost against Schalke last time they played as well. So if Schalke win here, they would have the head-to-head. -head. That means if the teams were tied at the end of the split, Schalke would be put above Splice in the stand. But that's enough about playoff information. Let's have a look at the jungle pathing from the start of this game. You can see Memento actually going up towards the top side quite early. He's got that scuttle crab. Went red into scuttle now. Maybe trying to put Chachi behind on this Cho'Gath. A level two dive is not unheard of, but I think Memento will just decide for the Krugs instead. Now scaring with a taunt onto Ignar. That explosive shot doing a huge amount of work onto him and Kobe on this Tristana off to a good start. Level 2 really strong with the Tristana Galio. The all-in power is very, very scary. Um, I was a little concerned about the Tom Kench pick, but I think it really does fit into the whole idea of being able to play towards side lanes because of what his ultimate can do. It offers that extra bit of mobility, and we do know that Ignar loves to roam whenever he sees an opportunity to. And obviously, upset and his uh, Ezreal is something you always have to respect, one of his favorite champions. So I feel they definitely have comfort, and it makes sense in the comp. But in terms of the 2v2, it's definitely a rough matchup. And if you make one misstep, you can very quickly lose your life, especially given that the Ezreal doesn't have the heal. He can't provide that extra assistance for the time. Kench um, in the event that he does get caught by a taunt or a knock-up from the gallery.
Memento was able to steal away one of Xerxes' camps here. Xerxes going to realize that in just a second. So Memento has a very slight advantage. And as Xerxes parts up towards the top side, you do have to look at this cannon pick from Odawane. He's running the Klepto in this game. And I want to quickly just put into the minds of people's heads AD cannon. Um, only because when I think about late game, the thing about Cho'Gath is in a side lane, because of how just naturally tanky he gets, it's really difficult for an AP cannon to kind of threaten the side. You can't burst him. Yeah, so what's actually better is to go AD, because the thing about Cho'Gath is once you start landing autos, especially on things like a Blade of the Ruin King, it's very easy to chase him and run him down, because all of his uh, uh, crowd control abilities are very slow, they're very telegraphed, and if they land, they're obviously very impactful, but the drawback is that they they're quite difficult to land. Um, so I think AD Cannon could be a thing this game, and they already have enough AP damage with yep. the uh, Silas anyway. Um, so it is a possibility, just want to introduce that. But also the Kleptomancy, it makes a lot of sense into tank matchups where the tank can't really do anything. Yeah. It gets regularly freely harassed. Right, if you have called it out, we will call you Nostradamus, Vedius the Predictor. Now Zersi was well, spotted here by Abadage, so it's not the sneakiest gank in the world. We have seen that both these supports actually roam with their junglers quite often throughout the course of the split. Norskaren and Ignar try to make plays for their team and don't really expect Ignar to be able to do that too much this game on the Tarm Kench. Much more about how Norskaren will facilitate his mid lane. Uh, if there, when there's a will, there's a way. It's uh, true. <laughs> and uh, the thing about Ignar is he definitely doesn't like convention. Uh, his performance hasn't been the best in recent weeks. I feel like he's made a couple of questionable plays and um, but overall, I do feel like respect towards him is very high. And I was one of the people coming to this bit that was like, I don't know how people can put Ignar as a top three support. He had a really bad year on BBQ. I feel like his champion pool is really limited, especially when the Arn Sensor Messer existed and he just refused to play those champions and uh, I was uh, skeptical but I do feel this split he showcased that he is still a very talented support one of the best in Europe uh, and he wants to try and help Schalke secure a top spot at the end of the split so we'll see if he can pull it off. Mendo was looking for a gank there towards the middle lane has got a control ward in the bush but Actually dodges away from Chachi's vision here. I wonder if Chachi's aware that Memento is around. Obviously aware of the possibility, but hasn't spotted him out yet. Odo, looks like he's going towards the AP cannon route. Yeah. Uh, he's got the Hextech revolver. Yeah, it's sad. I was really hoping for the AD cannon. Yeah, it's I was thinking really about good in the one. side lane, but it does reduce your team fighting power, and maybe Schalke still want to have that option. But now we see the gang coming in from Memento. Slicing Mastrum used. Chachi stunned up underneath the tower, though. And Chachi uses the flash to get away. So typically, uh, you'll max the, the Feral Scream, the W, on the Cho'Gath, um, because the silence duration... Uh, uh, you want the lower cooldown, and I believe the silence duration increases per level as well. Um, but basically having it is really useful, especially in ganks, because the moment people charge in, you silence them, and they can't follow up with any crowd control. So uh, really good, especially against AP, or, sorry, ability-reliant champions like the Kennen and the Sejuani. So uh, I like the pick overall. The sustain it has is really good in the match as well. Um, and the Merc treads that he's already picked up yep. on his first base I mean, it's going to be tough to kill indeed. I think Splice have just, you know, they've gone to some sort of sh shoe shop recently because first item completed boots on Kobe as well, trying to crack out the Yeezys or something, showing off. So given that it is a very, uh, it's probably going to be a pretty slow early game, Sejuani not the strongest ganker, she doesn't have that many lanes to play around outside of maybe top. A um, little fun story for you. Oh, here we go. I used to be a uh, Cho'Gath mid one trick. That uh, does not surprise me I in any way, to, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, there was a period of time where I just, I only played that champion because of how strong it was. Like, I don't think people appreciate how powerful a silence is against some AP champions. And one of my favorite matchups was Cassio, because if she landed Q and then ran towards you silence her, and she can't do anything. Uh, and then you, uh, you chase her down with the E, and then you <laughs> knock her up, and then you eat her. Um, Cho'Gath mid, one of the best counters to Zed as well. Yeah, it makes fact. sense. And given that he was buffed on this patch and he's solo queue players at home, if you want a good counter to him, go for that Cho'Gath. Get a Rod of Ages early, get that AP in. Uh, you can also go for an early Zonyas, doesn't matter. AP ratios are insane on Cho'Gath. And uh, yeah, really, really strong mid. Obviously, he's not been going AP this game, but there was a There was a hope for you. as well. There was no hope that he was going to AP <laughs> this game. <laughs> um, I did look it up. Feral Scream does scale. Uh, the of course, scales I told you levels. that. Yeah. Did you doubt me? It's a tenth of a second to each level that you put into it. And he's not maxing at the moment. He's maxing Vorpal Spikes Wait, for really? the wave clear. Oh. He's putting points into okay, the E. Okay, okay. Uh, which, which makes sense as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I thought that you would max the W. Um, 
just into this matchup because it's really good against ability users and it helps with the poke. But yeah, I have seen uh, Emacs was not super uncommon, especially when Cho'Gath was like really, really popular. Mm -hmm. um, when he was like first pick and ban, uh, the Emacs was, was the usual go-to because it does help with the wave clear and it's very useful like sticking to targets as well. So for the moment, both teams seem to just be pretty happy scaling up, starting at these, you know, first bits of items, first completed items in across the board. And I think coming out of pick and ban, when we talked about the win conditions and the style each team's going to play, this is very much to be expected, right? Neither of these teams really need to accelerate an early game lead into a late game. They both have good scaling. Yeah. Both teams will be happy just starting to get towards a 1-3, starting to get towards a 1-4. So I... This could be an opportunity to talk about differences between 1-3 and 1-4. Oh, that's what I set you up for, <laughs> but it's your choice, um, Gadiel. So, so the basics are, in terms of the difference between a 1-3 and a 1-4 is, um, when you play a 1-4, you play on two lanes. When you play a 1-3-1, you play on three lanes. That makes sense. Um, and Splice's issue is that they would often draft 1-3-1 comps where two champions would be really good in a 1v1 or 1v2 situation, mm -hmm. and they would put that champion with, like, the Ezreal in the mid lane. Okay. And so all that would end up happening is you wouldn't generate pressure anywhere on one side lane, um, and they wouldn't have enough pressure on top side. Um, speaking of top side pressure, Schalke have actually sent three members up towards this top lane. But Noskaren's roamed all the way up from bot lane as well. Momento gets the stun. Noskaren trying to get enraged for the hero's entrance. He'll keep Ch Chachi quite tanky. Gets the double knock on to Abadaji, who has to flash away. Chachi's still under the tower. Odo is quite low as well. The captain comes out from Xerxes. Chases Memento off. The flash use. Abadage now caught underneath the tower. Chachi almost gets taken out with his own ultimate, but will get it in the end. Odoamne running away here. The realm warp is used from Humanoid, but Splice answer the Shalka dive incredibly well. Yeah, beautiful full response from Splice and Mr. Chachi is showcasing his Cho'Gath skills. Very rarely do you get to make that comment, but he uh, buys enough time for the rest of his team to show up. But while all that has been happening, Schalke have continued to push towards the bot side of the map. Kobe doing what he can to try and hold the line, but Splice, they find themselves first blood. And part of it was off Norskaren's roam up towards that top side as well. Got in range for the hero's entrance, made it even harder to dive onto Chachi and Splice just had a read on Schalke here. So there's actually no vision here uh, from the side of um, Splice, but because they get spotted from the cone, they recognize this is happening, and it actually takes them a while to set up this dive, um, and then the ultimate comes out, but the galley was already making his way up there. Oh, but Abadage oh. tries to get the ultimate, and he's going to set the execute up here, but unfortunately for him, a really good knockup from Chachi buys enough time. The stopwatch then comes out, Abadage then misses the stun, and then another really good knockup. Um, uh, comes in through Vizichachi and you think, oh, but the ultimate would have been enough. No, because he gets the heal back from the minions that he was able to kill yeah. earlier on. So, honestly, really well played from Vizichachi there. Really good response from the rest of Splice. And now Abadage, once again, uh, padding out those death stats in the early game. Carnival passive coming in for Chachi pretty well there. Teleport used towards the mid lane here by Ignar. Just wants to get back towards his team as quickly as possible. We'll try and clear out some vision here, Norskaren. Takes a little bit of chip damage from upset, but not too much. The Ezreal going Iceborne Gauntlet first with that tier stacking up as well. So I do want to highlight uh, as well, even though Upset is running the Kleptomancy, against the, in the Tristana lane, he's been really struggling to actually get procs, which means that the gold is dead even in the mid lane, uh, or in that bot lane. There's only about 100 difference between the two, and I think that's largely because... Ooh, uh, Oluwame forced a flash, but he was the other guy that I want to talk about. His Kleptomancy up in the top lane has been where he's been building a lot of his gold advantage towards the top side of the map as well. Um, this is now going to extend a little bit more for Schalke because they're picking up these turret plates. Um, but this is what I mean by Schalke didn't necessarily need to force anything because when you run the double Klepto, you hit those item spikes a little bit sooner, which means that you can then threaten more on a side lane much earlier on than Splice should have been able to. And Splice had moved their bot lane up towards this top side now as well with a teleport from Kobe. Looking for the Rift Herald. Should be an easy enough secure. Abadage may be looking for a little bit of action, but not going to get anything out of it. Xerxes will get the Rift Herald. You get a couple of towers up towards top. And it actually looks like it might even be a four-man stack from Splice. The question is, do they use the Rift Herald top? Because that tower is going to fall pretty quickly in the bottom lane. Upset on it already. Yeah. The Rift Herald here will take this out, but I think Splice have realized they're not going to have the time to put it down and get the charge off. So they give Schalke the first tower, and they just settle for some plates in that top lane. And Memento going to trade it for a Mountain Drake towards the bot side of the map as well. But Oduwane, forced to play much more defensively. He's going to be sitting on the back foot, just waiting for this tower to eventually drop. To me, this suggests that Splice actually have their focus on uh, using the Rift Herald in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Silas 
does have decent wave clear, especially with the Q-Max. Uh, however, he's not going to be able to do much against a Rift Tower that's sieging onto his face, and especially when you pair that up with a Tristana, then the siege from Spice is going to be very, very strong. I do want to give a bit of credit to Spice for this rotational play, though, because it looked like Upset and Ignite were going to get that bot lane tower anyway. They'd already chipped away a couple of plates because of the Norsker and Roam, sure. and, they st and Spice still managed to get a full five plates onto Kobe. So the gold difference between those 80 carries could have been really big, and it's actually only about... 200, 100 or so. So you have to give some credit to Splice there, realizing they couldn't make the play bot lane, change it top, and still get those plates out. Then we give a lot of credit to Splice. I think they're playing this other game very, very well. Uh, their big win condition is very much about relying on that 5v5, maybe even the 1-4. But when I say 1-4, it's very much just about having Humanoid push out one of the side lanes, which, huh, fun fact, he's doing right now. Huh. Um, and he's just going to try and mitigate the Silas. And then what he'll do is he'll push out the wave, uh, and then he can use his Realm Warp to join a fight, or he even has the Teleport himself. So he's basically just going to be following Abadagi around, uh, as Chachi now could be caught out. They're going to get stunned up by the Sedge while the Abadagi doesn't land the stun, but the Glacial Prison comes out. Chachi already down, and Ignite and Upset join the party to separate the rest of Splice. Humanoid still pushing in the bottom lane means this is a 3v5, and you can see Memento coming down. Maybe trying to catch out Humanoid in that bottom lane. He has a lot of movement speed. Doesn't have the ultimate, of course, as he just used it. Odo trading with Humanoid. Xerxes on his way down here as well, but he's gone over Vision. And Splice, unable to react to that too much. Well, didn't get that much damage from the tower in the bottom lane. Didn't really get that much in the mid either. But, Vizichachi, he ends up losing his life. And unfortunately for him, this is something that happens pretty regularly. Uh, he gets caught out a surprising amount, especially last week. He was one of the... Uh, well, I mean, he was sick for one day. So he was sick last week, so I'll give him the That's benefit true. of the doubt. Yep. But uh, definitely so far this split, he just seems to be in random places, either trying to get vision or trying to set up for a play. But if we actually look at the state of the map, he thinks I'm okay because I have pressure mid and I have a Jarvan behind me. But the reality is it's way easier for Abadage to get this collapse than... He's not that tanky this early on. And the time Kench Ultimate actually acts as a really strong zoning tool to prevent Norskarian from providing any support. And he didn't want to commit his ultimate because he thought that he could also lose his life. So uh, big blunder there from Vizichachi and Shark find themselves a kill. So a little fun fact for you guys here. Abadage stole the feast and then feasted Vizichachi. Yes. So he now has 120 bonus health. Oh, and you get to keep those, You get to you? keep the stacks. Yes. So Abadage, if he can continue to steal that ultimate away from Chachi, uh, gets a lot of damage out of it, of course, because strong AP ratio, yeah, and uh, we'll be able to make himself a little bit more tanky as well. Ooh, I would argue, don't face check, don't face check. Good. Jarvan though, he's looking for it. Spots Abadage out. No one really here down towards the bottom side to react. The Galio. It's teleport for oh, Odo no. though. Oh, he's gonna die. That's what Vettius thinks. Abadage thinks otherwise as he steps away. Well, that was tense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, surely he's going to die here. I was, uh, I'll be honest, I was nowhere near as tense as you seem to be. Fight erupting in the mid lane a little bit as Upset jumps forward onto Chachi here. As the Iceborne Gauntlet, it's very hard for the Cho'Gath actually to catch out the Ezreal now. Sorry, that's say <laughs> slide and glide. It was like, he threw his javelin out and it went at an awkward angle and then he was like, Whoa! <laughs> But pops the Rift Tower mid here. Uh, Cannon in the top lane as well. Aha, the split push is beginning to happen, and Splice trying to leverage this. So here we are, the 1 4. This is what we're talking about. Rise now sits in a bot lane, trying to generate pressure. He has the ultimate to join if he needs to. And Splice are technically a five man right now, which forces Odo Armade to come down and help the rest of his team. But fortunately for them, uh, Schalke, they actually just, even with only three people, po uh, postured. Also, we're very aggressively, very yep. far forward uh, to basically say, you know what, Splice, we're not going to allow you to approach the wave, which means that they didn't actually have a big enough minion wave to secure the tower. So Odo Omni mates his way back up towards the top side. But that was a perfect example of both teams trying to play towards their comps. Mm -hmm. But also you can see how good the rise is in a side lane at keeping control of Abadagi. So Shaka don't just have full control over the entirety of the map. They actually only have control of the side that the rise isn't in. Um, which means that Oduwamne is going to be trying to avoid him and just slowly chip away at these towers. Uh, seems to be working okay for Shelko at the moment. About 1,200 gold lead here for them. You've got the Ezreal sitting at two items. You've got Rod of Ages already stacking up on Abadage as well. Odo finished that proto belt, building up towards wherever he wants to go next. Across the board, though, Splice in a very good position as well. Like, 1,000 gold at this point of the game isn't too monumental at all. And so we we'll have to continue to see exactly how these two teams want to play around. It seems like mid is the focus predominantly, 
uh, especially for Splice. They want to try and crack that mid lane tower with a Mountain Drake up in a few seconds as well. They'll probably want to play around that Buster Shot used from Kobe. That's the ultimate out from the Tristana, just a Force upset away. There's a lot of damage though onto the AD carry just before the Mountain Drake spawns. Uh, the bot wave hasn't been pushed out, and while the Rise is top, no one's actually going to match him, which means he could be forced to TP here. Um, where is no one from the side of Shark? Well, I really want to see the Rise actually start to move down. Yeah. Unless Splice have just decided, you know what, we'll give up this Matt and Drake, and we'll instead just focus on getting Vision towards top side, and we'll start getting rid of chip damage onto this tier two. The Vision we'll, is Baron's about to spawn as well. Yeah, but they're not just going to rush the Baron down, do you know what I mean? And uh, it could just be a setup to make it harder for Odawamne to split push. Um, especially when there's nothing really to play for on the bot side. Remember that they haven't even taken the tier one in the top lane as well. So Splice, I think, just accepting the fact that they don't want to try on 5v5 at this point. And so they uh, they decide to make the trade for Vision. And they have pretty good Vision setup right now. Chachi once again caught out here by Ignar and Upset, though. The knockup lands Upset with the chase. Exhaust comes out. Chachi has the flash to jump across this wall. Trying to hold it for as long as possible. We'll use it in the end. And Shalko once again find the catch. So I had stats ping me the number of isolated deaths. Um, but we don't have time because there's a fight in the top lane. Oh, it caught underneath the tower, gets a one for one trade, but Humanoid and Xerxes are the ones to try and force the fight. So they actually attack one of the side lanes and successfully find a kill onto Oduwamne, but he does a great job of training it back. Now the Rise actually, rather than push his advantage, is being forced to base because they're afraid of Izachachi in this 1v1 against Abadage, who he could actually look for a dive here. Possibly. He doesn't have a stopwatch, which is always a little bit tricky. Tumble oh, coming in behind him as well. This is. Splice joining the party, Humanoid on his way, Ignar on his way as well, but Ignar, no ultimate, no teleport from the Ezreal either. Abadage needs to put on his fancy feet. Rooted up, but Ignar and Memento have the flank position now. Norskaven in range for the ultimate if he's going to join that fight. But nothing actually comes out of it. The teleport, a little bit of a waste there from Humanoid. A little? No, it was a complete waste. He uh, actually achieved nothing. Um, and all he does is force Shalka to base. So not entirely sure why he invested that teleport if they weren't willing to commit to it. But let's have a look at how this play happens. Use the round warp to bring in Xerxes. Odoamne very quick to use his ultimate. Uh, doesn't have the stopwatch available which means that he ends up losing his life. But fortunately for him, towers do a lot of damage now. And uh, that was enough to help trade a one-for-one one at the very least. Does cost him his flash, though, which means he's going to be a little less impactful in these fights. But note how he has gone for an early Void Staff. Uh, like that against all the magic resistance that you're seeing on the side of Splice. Very quick fun fact, if you're sending it around 80 magic resistance, then it's worth getting a Void Staff. That is the the point at which you should try and buy it. Yeah, if the enemies on average. Enemies, yes, yeah. yes, yes. If you have AD, it doesn't matter. But yeah. <laughs> Don't penetrate your own magic. Yeah. Um, do you just see the Muir mana completed on the Ezreal now? So that second tier is going to start stacking up for himself. Humanoid's finished both of his double scaling items, except Rod of Ages has a couple of minutes left before it's fully stacked. Two items on Corby as well. That Tristana, you have to watch out for her. Played a lot of AR Earth. And she's very strong in that mode, so I assume she's pretty good on Summoner's Rift as well. True, very, very true. We're also seeing how strong the Rise is in a side lane. This is why I really like the pick. I think he does well into both Silas and the Kennen. Uh, he's now a whole level ahead of both of them, and he's just generating a lot of pressure in a side lane. You can see how far ahead he is in terms of the farm. He's even built himself up a 550 gold bounty. He has the fully uh, stacked tier, now the Archangels, and the Rod of Angels very close to being fully stacked as well. So Humanoid looking very, very strong. Yep. And it's all about this other side lane that Spice have to be careful of because they don't really have anyone to deal with the Silas or the Ken. I mean, would there ever be a point that the Cho'Gath can deal with them? Is there ever a point where he's just too tanky for them to I actually mean, get work their way through? I think he will be able to deal with the Cannon because the Cannon will never be able to one-shot you. I don't think he'll ever be able to deal with the Silas because okay. the moment Silas, I think, completes Void Staff, um, He's just too consistent at team fighting that you can't really do anything. This guy was looking for the flash engage, instead going to go in with the hero's entrance. Ignar flashes away. Xerxes popped his ult there as well, but no summoners burn on the side of Splice, whereas Ignar had to use a flash for himself. Just trying to generate some pressure as the oh, 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 good ulti. Buffers the jump, though. That's something you can do on the Tristana. Looks like Chachi's trading on the top side as well as upset forces Norskaman away. Chachi just trying to keep Abadage around, who does use his own flash there. Oh, like respecting the Humanoid coming, yep. with the Realm Warp. Yep. Interesting that Chachi doesn't have the flash at the moment. It's cleansed teleport uh, on that unsealed spell. Yeah, it's because he used his flash earlier and when he got picked off from the bot side jungle. I do. Uh, yep, so. Forced to change the cleanse now does is pretty good against the mana CC that Chaka does have. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, also Abadage being forced to use his flash is really bad when he's the one that wants to generate pressure on a on a side lane. So sneaky. Hmm. This is 
risky. Very risky, but if you get it, you finally manage to open up that The senses are tingling right now for Splice. They know something's up. So you've got Realm Warp on Humanoid. You've got Splice getting some vision in the pit. Chachi off towards the side lane, immediately teleports in. 3,000 HP on that Baron. Zerzi jumps in as well. He gets the smite. He steals it away. The Slicing Mouse will hit onto three members, but already Odo is down. Memento very low as well in the backside of the fight. Two kills, three kills for Splice. They take the Baron. They take everything away from Shalka. Upset even jumps forward. Maybe a little bit too risky from him. It's a double for Humanoid. Realm Warps down towards the bottom lane just to get himself out of dodge. And what a great play from Splice. Incredible stuff from them. They steal away the Baron. They get four kills and you have to think that Schalke just made a big mistake there went for a very sneaky Baron spider senses from Splice were tingling and immediately they clapped. Oh it's just so painful to watch as we bring up the replay just just uh, you've got to look at the decision making Splice I I don't know why they're trying to force a Baron in this situation and uh, and you can just see here Memento in the smite fight versus Zerse he jumps over the wall and you can see the rest of his team right now is just sitting there being like Ah, uh, what's going on? What's going on? What is this? I don't know why they tried to force this Baron. Like, literally, my, my, I was just thinking this all the time, Medic. I couldn't understand why they tried to force this play. They're playing this one-through-one -one comp. Uh, their scaling was going fine. The worst-case scenario for you is trying to group up in a Baron pit and force a fight, and it ends up like this. Good stuff for Splice, they're now in a commanding lead. It's very difficult now for Schalke to really threaten on a side lane because Splice are the ones with the Baron, they yeah. have a very strong rise. And now Schalke have just kind of handed the game on a silver plan. So there's basically nothing you can do. And then you've got Tristana only scaling up in terms of rage. It's Schalke trying to do something as they catch out Humanoid and Xerxes. Ignal got the flank off with the Abyssal Voyage, but Humanoid flashes away. Upset forced back towards the bottom of the fight. And it's Schalke who make the play, but Splice who answer back immediately. Splice still in a perfectly fine position. The Tristana very close to completing those three items. Just slowly sieging onto the base. Note how that top lane has been abandoned. This is the classic one for yep. Medic. They don't really care about that wave. They're just moving between mid bot, mid bot. Utilizing this rise to generate pressure and then grouping up with the rise to actually siege onto the turret. But right now they actually have the Tristana in the solo lane. She's got the rapid fire cannon as well. So all you need to do is step forward, get that one strong auto attack down. You chunk away at the tower so quickly with Tristana. If you use your explosive charge, they get the mid lane tower. They now come down towards the bottom side and Splice are well in control of this game. Now, if you, uh, in an ideal world, Splice would have full vision control over this top side of the jungle. So they would sweep all the vision out, but now Shaka going for a fight. Odo engages, Hero's entrance used as well. Stolen away there by Abadadi. Zersi puts them in the Cataclysm though. They still caught out Humor. That's the counter Hero's entrance coming out from Norsegaven. Upset, upset's done. He's dead. Schalke lose their AD carry, and maybe they're going to lose a lot more than that, because once again they start a fight, and Splice are the ones who come and knocking at their door. They take him out, it's another kill, the resets for Kabe are bound. Ignar, the next to four, you have to feel he's done. It's a double for Splice, and Schalke make the play, but Splice just blow them away. Elation on the faces of Splice as they are on the track to secure a massive win for Schalke, and as the race for playoffs heat up, Splice will secure another win. Schalke tried to make play after play, but it was just not their day today. Splice, come and knocking at their door. They'll take down these Nexus Towers. They'll take the Nexus. And they look Schalke in the eye and say, we are the superior team today. Really like the draft from Splice. I felt like it just played towards their strengths. We saw a really good one for, we saw good team fighting, we saw them punish the mistakes of their opposition, and once they had the lead, they knew exactly what to do with it. 26 minutes, 54 seconds. That might be the fastest Splice game we've ever seen, Medic. It's quite possible. <laughs> Not known as a team that plays incredibly quickly. I mean, their average win time is 37 minutes, so it's 10 minutes quicker than their average game time. But you have to you have to look across the pond. You have to look at the other side of the rift, Vedius. Schalke made a litany, a slew of mistakes, a plethora of mistakes this game. And they're still yet to win a game in the second half of the split now. What are they, 0-4, zero, 0-5? Five, zero, five. Zero, five. Wow. A devastating second half so far for Schalke after they had such a commanding first half of the split sitting in that second place spot. I was one of the analysts giving them so much praise, saying that how much they reminded me of the Fnatic from last year. Looked like they could literally do everything and it just feels like that they've been underperforming. They've, they tried to force so many things and they end up getting punished every single time. It's 
it's disheartening for them because now they sit equal with SK Gaming at 7-7. Seven and seven. They sit only one win ahead of Fnatic, who play later today. Only one win ahead of Misfits. Origin are at the same scoreline, but Origin still have a game to play today. And you're looking at Schalke as a team fighting for sixth Ooh, place it's now. It's almost like every game counts, It Medic. does. Every game counts. Uh, Splice, though, incredibly happy with this, have separated themselves a little bit from that chasing pack. With so they're the eight wins now, They're right? eight and six now. Ooh, so they're, like, solely in that third place yeah. spot. Origin could catch them if they win today. Ah, oh, 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 oh. really exciting next couple of weeks. But huge win for Splice. And again, I cannot reiterate how happy I am to see Splice just kind of go back to this. Like, yeah, it yep. was a little slow. Yeah, it wasn't the most exciting That's game. That's their but I just feel like that it was controlled. I felt like that they picked the right moments. They punished their opposition very well. I feel like that just overall, really great draft, really great play, really great stuff from Splice. Yeah, that's exactly what they wanted to do. I think if you look at Splice in the coming few games, you know, they've got a couple of hard ones, but it, assuming they can take one win, they're pretty much guaranteed playoffs because usually about that nine win yeah. scoreline. So you're looking maybe at the Fnatic game, maybe at the Misfits game, maybe at the SK game for a win for them. Uh, key player of the vote is a, a player uh, that was player not of the game vote. Yeah, do you want to read it for me? It is now live at Lolly Esports on Twitter. Your options are Vizitachi on Cho'Gath, Zerse on Jarvan, or Humanoid on Rise. Um, I personally would give it to the Cho'Gath because I think he was a fantastic Cho'Gath player. Yeah. I thought he did an excellent job. Even though he didn't max fail screen. Even though he didn't max fail screen. But still, very, very good. You could give it to Humanoid as well. Zerse also got the Baron Steel. Yeah, so I mean, you could give it to him. You've got the wealth of options here. You, that's why we give them the three options. It's up to the fans, really. <laughs> Enjoy. Have fun with that one. It's definitely up to the fans. For more on Splice's win, let's check in with Law and then mid laner. Thank you, Medic, and thank you, Humanoid, for joining me. Congrats on this victory. I mean, you win on red side. You win under 30 minutes. This isn't something we're used to with Splice. How come? I mean, I guess we were tired of going into late game every game, so we just wanted to end it early. Did you plan it to end this this early? Well, not really, since we have like really hard outscaling comps, so we kind of wanted to go late again. But yeah, we won some fights, so it was pretty early end this game. I gotta say, seeing you play over the last few weeks, I felt like you were less confident than you used to. Do you feel this way too? Uh, yeah, the last few weeks were pretty tough for us, and uh, we didn't play our best. And uh, I think our drafts were not ideal some games, so yeah, it was... And the confidence was like, if you, if you start losing, your confidence goes down as well, so yeah. What do you tell yourself when this confidence is down, as you say, to pick it up back? Because you were popping off today. I mean, you just... I just say that we can do this this game and we have to win. And uh, if we win, then uh, it will all be good and no one cares about about past losses if we can win uh, this game and go to playoffs. Absolutely, and you have two more weeks to reach playoffs. It's gonna be harder for you guys uh, to w gain this consistency because we talked about it with Duke a few, year, a few weeks back. So what do you need, guys need now to find finally this consistency to reach playoffs uh, with the time you have? I think we just have to play like we did today in the next games. So if we can do that, I think we have a pretty good shot at uh, making playoffs and going pretty far. So a faster version of Plays, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. OK, we'll see if you can make this happening. Thank you for joining me. And we'll send it back to Quickshot at the desk. Thank you very much, Lord. Congratulations to Splice picking up a monumentally important victory over Schalke, especially when you consider the race for playoffs. Um, I managed to catch up with Broken Shard very briefly, one of the coaches and support staff for SK Gaming who just took down G2. He started by saying that Schalke Nulfia's comp was <clears throat> poopy. He used a different word. Uh, let's talk about the draft because, uh, amazing, you were saying, you know, off air backstage that you actually quite like that both teams' comps kind of fit their identity. I kind of understood what Chaga was going for. Um, I think they basically wanted to have the one through one element continuously in the comp. That's why they, for example, picked the Tom Kench. They had the Ezreal to basically cover the mid lane, then Silas and Ken on both sides. So actually, I don't think the comp was uh, bad at all. And it actually makes sense to pick Sejani against a team like Splice because obviously, they are going to trend to 1-4 at some point, so you at least want to have some engagement within your comp. Uh, but I do think that Splice kind of understood their identity even better, and they started 1-4-ing at 17 minutes, which basically means that they actually really thought about this and understood, hey, if we just walk down mid lane and they cannot stop us, we're going to win the game. 
And it's also the fact that they had so many tools to walk down mid lane confidently, the likes of the Jarvan and the Galio, these high engage options. So you do talk about, you know, like the Sejuani, if Spice are going to one for you, you want that long range engage tool to try to punish that or catch out that four man unit if you have a numbers advantage. Spice were thinking the exact same thing, had the late game insurance policy with Kabe on the Tristana and had the engage tools that when they were ready, they could pull the trigger. It felt really good that both teams kind of played to their team's strengths, so to speak, and today it was Splice that came out on top. Uh, let's talk about a few of the plays, though, that helped define the game, starting with that first blood up in the top lane, Visit Chachi's Cho'Gath. Um, initially, the dive looked pretty good from Memento's side, but obviously Vision Reveal uh, uh, gave Visit Chachi a lot of time to think. Yeah, basically, you obviously have a three versus one situation, but you do not account for the Rice and Galu to come up. Like, obviously, the Rice was going to follow up anyway, but the Galu actually comes out of vision completely and then walks up to top lane to basically give enough backup, especially with the ultimate, and turn this dive around. And the thing was, is we were talking before kind of about what are the actual options that Memento have to gank? Like, where is he going to attack on the map? And I don't really know if I fully agree with looking at the top side and saying the dive on the Cho'Gath is the way to go when you didn't have perfect information about where everyone else was on the map. Yeah, I think if you open up the bot lane first, basically you have the exact opposite scenario coming in for you because Tom similar to Galio also has the ultimate available. So actually you can open up the bot lane first, have Tom roam into mid lane, and then you actually exert the same amount of pressure, if not more, that basically Spice did up in, did in the end. And I think that would have been the better play and the better rotation almost uh, to make that play happen. So of course now, as the mid game played out from that first blood up until this next replay, which we'll get to in a moment, um, the game felt close. The game felt, you know, uh, it felt to me like Shaka were playing the side lanes better as their comp allowed. It felt like Splice would force a couple of plays here or there. The Rift Herald used slightly sub optimally, so to speak. So, Froskuren, what do you think leads to a decision where Shaka said, let's try sneak a Barret? I think that they were trying to drive tempo of the game. They felt like they were really strong on the itemization that upset. You know, he was playing very aggressive, very far forward, trying to land all these skill shots. He probably felt very powerful, and he was. And so they move it into the Baron. Now, we discussed this this kind of back and forth, it's like, was it the right call yeah. to pull the trigger on starting the Baron? Or should there have been more prior setup to try to take small skirmishes or fights around the Baron before doing it? I'd like Maurice to answer that question when we actually run through this replay sure and draw some of the attention to specific moments that, you know, stood out in your mind. I mean, what, what I just, I'm just confused by is basically starting this Nash. We just had this question. I think even with, and as we see it now, uh, as soon as uh, the darkness uh, fades, um, Abadaga actually had the feast available, so he basically could make the true damage happen. And if you coordinate that with the jungler, that's a around 1.6k, 1.7k burst at this point in time. And the whole play actually becomes efficient. But if you do not coordinate it and you're all lay, like on the back foot because you see a Chachi TPing in also having a feast and you start panicking, that Coordination actually does not make sense anymore and yeah. doesn't help them. And of course, as you mentioned, coordination. Abadage on the Silas had stolen the feast. Not exactly the most traditional, you know, burst combo. Uh, and not something you get a huge amount of experience with. You can see that gold graph. It was Shalke in the lead with a 2,000 gold lead until Splice in that Alienware replay getting Baron and then winning the game, Froskuren. And again, it's just kind of this idea of you know, Splice make the clutch plays when it happens. We can levy all the criticisms we want at them in terms of kind of their um, stalled out mid game, but when push comes to shove, they do make the teleport play. They get into the Baron pit. They manage to find these smite seals. I believe also, I think uh, there was a jungle level disadvantage there as yep. well. But, you know, the TP came in, they knew that they had the Feast also on their own Cho'Gath, and it just came to, who's going to use the Feast-Smite <laughs> combo better here? And in the end of the day, it was the champion that owns Feast, uh, Vizichachi and Splice. Uh, look, it's actually Xerse that ends up winning Kia player of the game. He gets 43% of the votes. And with Splice picking up a hugely important win in the standings, we will be taking a look at the playoff checkup with Medic in just a few minutes. Shalke and Nulfia are now on a five-game losing streak. Froskuren, what do they have to fix in the last two weeks of gameplay, knowing how competitive this race is and knowing G2's just dropped a game, so teams like Fnatic are hot on the heels? The first thing that uh, Amaze and I looked at is why is Ignar on Tom Kench when he had champions like, I'll just throw it out, Blitzcrank available to him. Why not these aggressive supports? And you see a lot of Tom Kench as high priority in the LCK, and I think he can fit into this composition, but like, you're in the LEC, just play the LEC style. When uh, Schalke were on fire, it's because Ignar was making plays and roaming around the map. I'm always a fan of taking responsibility in some shape or form, especially when I see like I have uh, rookies or players that are not as confident on my teams. For example, last year, obviously, when I came into Schalke, 
I have the approach, okay, if I screw up, it doesn't matter. I'm a veteran anyway. I can take the criticism. I can take the responsibility. And I want someone on Schalke right now to take that responsibility and to say, okay, I'm going to play the carry champion. I'm going to play this engaged champion. And I'm going to make it happen whether it fails or not. Because right now, they're just playing to lose instead of playing to win. Yeah, I get that. Playing to not lose the game. It's overly safe. Well, listen, Splice end up with eight wins. And after a catastrophic... Well, that's congratulations to Splice. Fastest win of the split. Well done. <laughs> Stop. Moving on to the next one. After a catastrophic <laughs> well done, start to the split, <laughs> Fnatic have started their comeback run. Their eyes are set on yet another 2-0 week. We'll see if they can pull it off after the break. Oh, I almost uh, messed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting stunned up by 